Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about carbon now. Uh, so carbon in the ocean is really, really important uh, because the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is responsible for the greenhouse effect, both the natural and the anthropogenic greenhouse effect. Um, so if the um, concentration of carbon in the ocean affects the atmospheric concentration, that will then affect climate. Okay? So this is a figure from the IPCC report um, a couple of years ago. Um, and the numbers in, these, in the boxes here are basically the, the, the amount of carbon in that reservoir, in, in gigatons of carbon, which is a lot of carbon. Right? So the atmosphere has almost 600 gigatons of carbon. Naturally, we've added almost 200 gigatons of carbon by burning fossil fuels. Um, but if you look at the ocean, okay, so the surface ocean, so this is just the warm layer on the top of the ocean. That has 900 gigatons. Okay? So uh, I guess a third larger again than, um, or half as large again as the atmosphere. And then the deep ocean, so the deep ocean has 37,000 gigatons of carbon. Okay? Which is hugely more than is in the atmosphere. Okay? And remember that the concentration that's dissolved in the ocean is linked to the concentration that's dissolved that is in the atmosphere through this Henry's Law um, process. So that works both ways. Okay? So if you change the concentration of the atmosphere, that should, like, if you increase the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that should make more carbon dissolve in the ocean. Okay? And that's happening, and we'll see that later. Um, but also, if you increase the concentration of carbon dioxide in the ocean through some other process, that will increase the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Okay? So uh, really, uh, it's the, because the ocean is such a big reservoir, it's the ocean that's really determining what is in the atmosphere, okay? at least on timescales of longer than a few years. Okay. So if you remember back to the beginning where I dropped the mouse on the floor and, and whatnot, there was, this, there, was this, this was, there was this weird thing where carbon was massively concentrated in the ocean compared to nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, so this is the reason for that. So, uh, so there's going to be quite a lot of chemistry from now on. <laughs> um, so if you don't understand it, come and ask me at the end. Or go through the stuff online. Um, there's some YouTube videos and, and you can go through the recording of the lecture. So CO2 gas in the atmosphere, this is, a base, this is that reaction of dissolution. So some of this gas in the atmosphere will dissolve into the ocean. Okay? So this is the same for basically all gases. All gases will dissolve in a liquid. Now, it's not that, so for oxygen, that's all that happens. But for carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide that's dissolved actually reacts with water. Okay? And there's basically an abundance of water in the ocean. And that forms this species here, which is called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a very, very unstable molecule. Okay? So this molecule rapidly breaks apart, and that's what this reaction is here, to form this molecule here, which is called bicarbonate, and a hydrogen ion. Okay? And then, then this molecule here is also a little bit unstable. That breaks apart to form uh, this, mo this uh, molecule here, which is carbonate ion and also another hydrogen ion. Okay? So these reactions are equilibrium reactions. So they're not like what I was saying with photosynthesis, this is not really a reaction. These are real kind of backwards and forwards reactions. So there will be some equilibrium okay, where we'll have dissolved CO2 aqueous, we'll have a very, very small amount of carbonic acid, and then we'll also have some of this bicarbonate and some of this carbonate. Okay? existing all in equilibrium with each other. Okay? So the total CO2, okay, is some, so this, this is kind of quite confusing. So total CO2 includes chemical species that are not CO2. Okay? It includes CO2 aqueous, carbonate, which is this one, and bicarbonate. And it turns out that the equilibrium of these reactions means that most of the carbon in the ocean is in this form is in this bicarbonate form. Okay? So that means that if you have some CO2 in the atmosphere, 
Okay, it's in equilibrium with the concentration of this aqueous CO2, but there's all this other carbon in the ocean that doesn't interact with the atmosphere, so that's where all the other carbon is stored, essentially. So it's stored in chemical species that don't interact with the atmosphere. Okay? Now, one of the really important things about these reactions is that they are, they've got these hydrogen ions on them, okay? which makes them pH dependent. So if you dissolve CO2 in the, uh, in the water, okay, that if you add, if you add this, that drives this reaction towards having more of this, okay? Having more of this means it drives this reaction towards having more of these two, and this reaction then forms more of these two, which means that you add hydrogen ions, okay? So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate what that does so, the magic of science. Um, so, this I thought some people may have seen me pour stuff in here earlier. Okay, so, this is the water, and hopefully, this pH meter. Oh man, come on. Should tell me that it is approximately. What should we say? It's 6.64, 6.83. Okay, so pH meters are notoriously. Rubbish. Um, they take quite a long time to equilibrate, which is why I've got some indicator solution as well. So this is methyl orange. So the redder this gets, the more acidic it is. Okay. 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 So that's kind of yellowy. Now. So this is a soda stream. Okay. So I'm not either endorsing or condemning the Israeli occupation of Palestine by using soda stream, um, but that's where they're made. Um, so, and there, there are no alternatives. So, so what I'm going to do here is, so this is just tap water, so it says it's in a Brecon spring or whatever it is, but it's not, it's just tap water. Um, so now I've added CO2 to the, to the water, and it's now fizzy. Yeah, fizzy. So now when I add this, hopefully it should work, when I add the, okay, so hopefully, you can see that those are not the same colour. We convinced that this one is a little bit more red. Yeah? Just for, for comparison, we should put the pH meter and see what that does. Just for comparison. So this is um, diet. Whoa, is it uh, this is um, Sprite Zero for those uh, you know, weight cultures amongst you. Uh, That is quite acidic. So I basically don't need sprites. No, that's fine. So um, 4.5 something, something, something. Okay, so we've lowered the pH. Okay, so we start out with something that's approximately neutral. Okay, we add CO2. Okay, that CO2 uh, reacts with the water, forms carbonic acid. And kind of with the name there, that acidifies the water by disassociating and releasing those hydrogen ions. Okay? So. So this is, this is what happening. So we're basically, we're adding hydrogen ions by adding CO2. Okay? So this is making the ocean more acidic. Okay? And we'll come on to why this is important in a bit. So, um, so we go to some of the processes that are happening here. So if we take... Uh, this is uh, this, that, uh, that horrible reaction that biologists would be shocked. Um, so this is the summary of what happens with photosynthesis and respiration. So if we do photosynthesis, we take CO2 out of seawater. So that should make this re all these reactions go um, towards replacing that CO2, basically, that you take out of the system. Okay? So the equilibrium should then shift and raise the pH. 
higher pH, lower um, concentration of hydrogen ions. Now there's this other series of things that can happen in the ocean. So these two, I guess, summary, summary, uh, summary reactions are the, the precipitation of calcium carbonate. So this is making shells, corals, that kind of thing. Now, we don't actually know which form of carbon is really used in the reaction. Okay? It's either calcium and a carbonate makes calcium carbonate, which sounds obvious, but there's some evidence that we might actually be taking calcium and bicarbonate, and that's what actually the organisms use to make um, calcium carbonate. So you could, both of these reactions can happen inorganically, but most, I think, most of the organisms of the ocean that make calcite shells do this guy here. So you'll notice here that we're taking carbon that's dissolved in the ocean, and we're making carbon that's basically removed from the ocean. So that removes total inorganic carbon from the system. Okay? So that should reduce the concentration of CO2, which is one of the components of dissolved inorganic carbon. But there are these other things that happen. Right? So if we just look at this bottom one, we're taking out of the ocean some of these, okay? and we're adding in some of this guy, some of the, the um, carbonic acid. So if we look at what that will do, if we add carbonic acid, okay, that will drive this top reaction towards having more CO2, and it will drive the middle reaction towards having more uh, bicarbonate and um, hydrogen ions. So the equilibrium shift to basically replace the bicarbonate that's been lost. Okay? The effect of that is to then, if you make more of this stuff out of this stuff, you release more hydrogen ions into the um, ocean. So by precipitating out calcium carbonate, okay, you're basically adding acidity to the ocean. And even if it's this reaction here, at the top, the, the calcium plus carbonate, that's you're taking this out, okay? So that will drive this reaction. Okay, if you remove some of the products, that'll move the equilibrium towards having more products to replace those products that have been lost. So that will again raise the um, hydrogen ion concentration, lower the pH. So, so this graph hopefully should sum up why that's important. So this, this graph shows the pH dependence. So this is more acidic towards the left, uh, less acidic towards the right, so more hydrogen ions towards the left. These are the, the proportions of those different species. I say so. Carbon dioxide, dissolved carbon dioxide. So that, that star just means carbon dioxide plus carbonic acid, because carbonic acid is such a small component. Okay, it's, it's not even it's not even a percent of the total dissolved organic carbon. The green is the bicarbonate species, and the red is the carbonate. So at very high pH, okay, the proportions of the different types of carbon, you've got mostly, in fact, you've got almost all carbonates a tiny amount of bicarbonate and almost no CO2, okay? So that means that the concentration of the thing, the, only the blue one, only the CO2, can exchange with the atmosphere, okay? So if that means, if you've got proportionally more of the red and the green, that means that you can store much, much more carbon in the ocean without it being in the atmosphere. But if you lower the pH, okay? So if you do any of these processes that lower the pH, photo, uh, respiration or um, precipitating carbonates out of the ocean. Any of those processes change the relative proportions of all the different types of carbon. Okay? So you end up having more of the bicarbonate, and when you get kind of like beyond, beyond pH 8, you start to get much, much more CO2. Okay? So if we acidify the oceans, more of the carbon in the oceans can exchange with the atmosphere. Okay? So ocean acidification basically reduces the ocean's capacity to keep carbon out of the atmosphere. So the more we acidify the oceans, the, uh, the worse our CO2 problem gets. Okay? Now, this kind of works both ways. So we might be able to geoengineer the planet. If we could raise the pH of the ocean, that means that we could store more carbon in the ocean and solve our CO2 problem. Okay, one of the one of the one of the proposed mechanisms for for dealing with our carbon dioxide problem is to do this. Um, there are lots of problems. So, how do you raise the pH of the ocean? 
Okay, you have to dump lots of kind of alkaline solutions, lots of bases in the ocean. So you have to mine out lots of limestone, burn it, produce calcium oxide, and put that in the ocean, and hope that that doesn't destroy all of the ecosystems. Right? Uh, um, which you know might be possible, but it requires lots of work, lots of research. Is kind of you know one of the things that you might do with your life. Um, being inspired by this course. Okay, so uh, there is a kind of a little bit of a saving grace in the ocean. Okay, so if we add CO2 to the atmosphere, that acidifies the ocean, it reduces the capacity of the ocean to store CO2. Okay, so we change quite quickly the pH of that solution from uh, seven ish to four and a half ish. Yeah? Um, so what I'm going to do now, at great personal expense, I have bought actual mineral water from the KBS. So This is when the pH reads might go a bit crazy. Because the back and forth. Um, so what I'm going to do now is exactly the same experiment, but instead of with tap water, uh, I'm using whatever it's Brecon Spring or something. This would be quicker if I was allowed to swap you over. But. Slowly changing because the pH probe takes quite a while, so it doesn't like being changed into. So the pH probe thing might not work, so we might have to ignore actual measurements and just go with it. So with the um, with the tap water, we got this color change. Things work. Um, Okay, so this time you can see that it's not as orange, and in fact it should be almost exactly the same colour. Okay, we put the oh, that's yeah, I messed that up. Um, so I have to hold this now because if I put it in, it'll it's missing away. So the pH has gone um, down a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. So what's happened here is we've buffered the change, the addition of, um, uh, of CO2. Okay, so uh, because the mineral water has what we would call alkalinity. Okay, and we'll go on to discuss what that is in a bit. But basically, uh, there's a series of buffering reactions where if the seawater is too basic, it kind of forces, it basically produces more acid through changing the, spe the speciation of the carbon species. Uh, and if it's too acidic, it changes the speciation to mop up excess um, hydrogen ions. 